The Alibi. Has anyone ever felt the touch of someone's eyes as they divide you into the smallest segments of your living? It's cool. You can hear your heart beating, your lungs receding and relieving as your breathing hastens to catch up your senses back to the present. Have you ever met someone who can fascinate you every time you look at them? Turn your days into daydreaming for hours on end? The minutes pass like lightning flashes, with the shadow of laughs roaring in their avalanching existence. She asked me if I was ever in love, and I said yes. I said I recognized the feeling like a bee sting. Drum roll please and catch me diving into the deep end, where it's safe to assume you won't resume your past because things are different and overcompensated. I have been in love, but nothing like this. Nothing like a hero of strict illuminary reflection. This love lives and has movement within space and time and directs itself between our interjection. It sounds like a boring crash course over a mosaic lecture piece that you're just begging, please. I just want to leave and peacefully forget about the abstract, expressionist, regressional, refrigerated, blended, and slightly offensive art. Because what I see in her eyes and not exclusive to those irids, I see in the dreams of Oregon sunrises, tinted, distant, and fresh like winter. When I go to sleep, I dream of her. I don't say that as a metaphor or rhetorical literary device. I literally dream of her blinding away the night, away from my life until I'm surrounded by an impossible light, the kind that holds your breath, the kind that holds your soul by the adjoining arms of freedom. I'm possessed in duplicity, a comfort of which is there in her words and the infamy of the hours that pass by when my hands detach from hers, and she's not by my side. I float off infinitely then, swallowed later by the infinity of space's retirement. I made a promise to her. I promised her that we'd burn away Walden surrounding forests just to see the pond reflect our reality. I promised that I'd rather spend my days like Lawrence of Arabia, death from drought and sight, but I'd fight the blistering day and freezing nights if only to remember what it was, what it was like to meet her for the first time. To see her eyes shine and glow like the Aurora Borealis. I promise that the calluses we've built through friction will do more than help engender the definition to a love reimagined, re-engineered, refocused, and refuse to be less than intrusive. To watch the lingering storm droplets absorb into the topsoil, provide a steady source of nurturing health for our garden to grow, and breathe in life like snow in May. This is the essential of praying to God every day just to hear some kind of echoing in her voice. Whatever is flat rounds a point when I simply stare into her eyes. I'm aware of all the lies and deceit and grief that life floats about like oil spills, but I'll let myself spill into a million different kinds of volcanic emissions, and I'll allow the freight t train to derail from its path because the object is happiness, a blissful remedy that curves down on the slanted path towards an unbridled future. It's poised like wind chimes, vibra vibrantly emancipating the daring winds with, with melodic color. That's what I see inside the pages we've parted open. That's what is written in the end, the middle, and where we started. Where a casual interruption interrupted no one, and one day trailed into an uninterrupted wait. And it was getting late. And later the next day, fate placed us in the same place but outside, and no one can make me believe that we're inanimate. I've written about the effects of drugging yourself by the needle point of infatuation. I've cliff noted and spark noted what it means to win and lose. But with her, it's like I've won from simply being born. And if I fight like plastic wax soldiers melting into the floorboards, then it will still be my life and her arms and my surrendering ears and her whispering trumpet to revive the portion of my battered black rugsack, carrying all of my poems and short relational thoughts, comfort food for the brain and a warm jacket in case it gets insanely cold. And with her, I can relieve the straps from my shoulders, take hers instead. The consequences of loneliness bites like no other. Your pigment changes, it rearranges to some other color until you're left with blank white. 
You blankly stare at yourself like Frankenstein, realizing he's not a monster after all. That fear is a part of you that never will part from you. I may be afraid to be alone, but I'm not afraid to be alone with her. And whatever will occur in distance of passing and trading and trespassing on and on as we tread the ice in search of an eternal place beyond the edgeless rim a golden place up high i lay residing in her loving arms when absent from life i want that to be my alibi thank you